With only nine days to go until the presidential election, both national as well as battleground state polls are indicating a very tough road for John McCain right now. Here with their take on where this race stands, our CNN contributors for the best in the business. Uh, Democratic strategist James Carville is in New Orleans. Republican strategist Alex Castellanos is in Boston. Republican strategist Leslie Sanchez is in New York. And Democratic strategist Donna Brazil, she's with me right here <laughs> in Washington, D.C. Guys, thanks very much for coming in. Let me read to you uh, from what a uh, unnamed McCain advisor told our reporters here at CNN. There's a lengthy story on it at CNN.com. Uh, those of you who want to go there, you can read it. They're referring to what's going on in the, in the McCain campaign right now, specifically Sarah Palin, the vice presidential candidate. One uh, advisor is saying, she is a diva. She takes no advice from anyone. She does not have any relationships of trust with any of us, her family or anyone else. Also, she is playing for her own future and sees herself as the next leader of the party. Remember, divas trust only unto themselves as they see themselves as the beginning and end of all wisdom. Wow, th that's a pretty strong comment coming from a McCain advisor, Alex. What's going on? Because it looks like the finger pointing is already starting. Well, that's, uh, that's what happens sometimes at the end of a campaign when things are not going too well. But, you know, it's, it's, I don't think that's exactly an accurate picture of what's going on. I mean, one thing we all know about presidential campaigns, the, the new vice presidential nominee is always very heavily scripted. Every single word that uh, comes out of Sarah Palin's uh, lips, really, for these past month or so, has been scripted by the campaign. So for the campaign to say that she's not reflecting what, uh, what they intend her to say, I think, is, is very misleading. As a matter of fact, I'm told that when, when she was on, uh, on the airplane and got her that copy of the speech about William Ayers and uh, Obama palling around with terrorists, I'm told that her instincts were that that's not a good place for the campaign to go. Uh, but she was talked into doing that by the campaign, and so uh, and so that uh, her instincts, I thought in that case, were better than the campaign's. And she was a loyal trooper and did her job. But uh, I think it's unfair for the campaign to do that. Uh, let, let's bring in James first. Uh, James, uh, you've been around a lot of campaigns, uh, right. many of them winning, I think, in your case, but not all of them no, winning. Uh, give no, us your perspective. Not all of them. Uh, give, give, give us your perspective as a Democratic strategist. Well, Paul Begala and I wrote a piece uh, calling for finger pointing to begin on October 20th and, and have taken our advice and, and obviously the Palin people pointing at the McCain people and the McCain people at the Palin people and you have the eggheads pointing at the ditto heads and today's paper is just everybody blaming everybody, David Froman, David Brooks blaming Rush Limbaugh and they're calling for triage in the party and everything else. This is what happens when a campaign falls behind. It's, it's, it falls apart, and right now the entire right-wing movement of the United States is pointing at each other, and this is going to continue to happen. Leslie, it looks yeah. sort of ugly out there. You know, Wolf, it does, but I don't think that's unusual to, to campaigns. I think with respect, yes, it's, it's a competitive race. Yes, John McCain is behind, but listen to what he was saying earlier. As long as he's within four to six points, it is a competitive race. There are going to be people that are either circling the wagons or shooting within. Uh, but bottom line, I think with Governor Palin, she's been a strong candidate, and she can't win either way. In one sense, she's too scripted, too controlled by the campaign. On another, she's exerting her, her authority and reflecting her own views. I mean, I think the bottom line, the answer is probably right down the middle and it's going to continue to tighten up in this race you know donna one of the intriguing things from this anonymous quote from this mccain advisor saying that she sees herself we're talking about sarah palin potentially as the next leader of the republican party if in fact mccain loses and that's still a, a big if because there's nine days to go but do you see her potentially as the leader of the republican party if McCain loses? Well, she'll be in a cast of thousands. I'm sure Mike Huckabee and my home state governor, James' home state governor, Bobby Jindal, and many others will see themselves as leaders of the Republican Party. But you know, Wolf, this is a symptom of a campaign that's fallen behind. When you see staff people attacking the candidate, saying sloppy, unready, that's a sign that the campaign has turned internal at a time they should be putting on what I, I, I believe the last minute attempt to convince undecided voters. It's a terrible sign for the campaign. How much of a problem uh, would you say Alex, uh, the whole clothing, makeup, hair issue has been for Sarah Palin and for the Republican ticket. We did some checking. She spent, as you know, about 150000 Not she, but the Republican National Committee put right. up the money at Sachs uh, and at Neiman Marcus uh, for clothes. Uh, but look at this. 
makeup, uh, uh, a makeup artist for the first half of October. Uh, the, uh, the RNC spent $22,800 for her makeup. That compares to her, uh, the McCain, uh, McCain's chief foreign policy advisor, who got $12,500. Uh, the hairstylist got about $10,000 for the first half of October compared to the senior communications staffer who got $12,000. Uh, how much of a problem is this for the woman who says she's a hockey mom? Oh, I think, um, I think we all know that she's pretty frugal uh, up in Alaska. Uh, but, you know, looking good for the TV cameras for CNN is expensive, Wolf. Uh, you know how that is. And besides that, all the clothes, <laughs> it's, uh, it's going to be a cold winter in Alaska. we got to get ready. Uh, look, this is a minor distraction. Uh, nobody really cares about this. It's not central to their lives. What is central is that Sarah Palin actually did something remarkable for the McCain campaign. She gave him a message. You know, John McCain has been the outsider, the maverick, the guy who's going to change Washington, but he couldn't give his own campaign that message until Sarah Palin came along. She, I mean, vice presidential nominees usually don't do that. She did that for him. And those were the best, that was the best month of the campaign until uh, her there, standing was eroded, I think, by a lot of know, James, media attacks and then the economic meltdown. Yeah. There's no doubt, James, that she did rally the base. If that right. was her mission, she did an incredibly excellent job rallying the conservative religious base of the Republican Party. But at that point, it was up to John McCain to bring in the independents, the undecided, uh, the middle of the rotors. But a lot of them say they were, uh, they, they were uh, turned off by what Sarah Palin said right. and what she said stood for so it seemed that she you know she she did some good for the republicans but she also did some bad well she did rally the conservative base and that's a very 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 fair analysis well but she also but the, but the, again it, this is this egghead ditto head divide they have a lot of highly respected conservative intellectuals just out and out question her ability to be president of the united states and this is part of the civil war that's going on in the Republican Party. If you look at the New York Times uh, Sunday Magazine section today, Robert Draper, an excellent journalist, they were all pointing fingers about how, how the McCain campaign had different messages and things like this. This is very typical of a party and a movement that is falling apart before no, an election. No, I, I think they're going to have a hard time to maintain discipline between nine election day. Go ahead, Leslie. Well, if it's not unusual for economic conservatives and social conservatives to clash within the Republican Party, I mean, that's been happening historically. I mean, you're exactly right. Governor Palin mobilized this base and got it so that John McCain could be within four to five points. Look at the Reuters C-SPAN Zogby poll came out last night or basically early this morning. It shows within five points that John McCain is closing that gap with incomes of 35000 and higher. If he can continue to maintain that, and if, even if you look at the fact you take out California and New York out of that, look at the other 48 states. He, it is really probably closer to dead even. This is still a competitive race. Before people are writing the eulogies, I think you need to focus on the positives. But and Leslie, the last thing, with respect to this makeup stuff, why aren't we talking about what Hillary Clinton spent? Why aren't we talking about uh, Michelle Obama, who has her own traveling staff as well with there? I, I just think it's sometimes uh, disingenuous just to focus on one and not all, all right, the others. What, well, uh, let me just say two things. Uh, hold on, been, hold on. She's been quite alienating to independents who clearly are the majority in this electorate and the, most, uh, the majority of undecided voters. Secondly, on, on, on the makeup clothing scandal, so to speak, historically women candidates have faced uh, obstacles in discussing policy issues when m many journalists want to talk about their hair, their hemline, and their clothes. So I understand why, why they had to dress up, but I think this is a case of being all dressed up with no place to go. If she cannot go into blue states and rally independence, then clearly Sarah Palin has not been a net plus to the ticket.